If you recall, last week we looked at closely at Jesus' second coming, also known as his last judgment or judgment day. And we looked at the latter part, the final section of Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 to 46, where Jesus talked to us as separating the sheep and the goats. And we talked about the difference there and the purpose of separating the sheep and the goats, and the sheep there stood for believers, and the goats stood for the unbelievers. Today, we actually are going backwards in Matthew chapter 25, and we're going back to the first 13 verses, the verses that we just read a moment ago, and we'll read again in a second. This is really now a parable, an illustration, again, of what Judgment Day will look like. And this section, Matthew 25, verses 1 to 13, is the classic section of Scripture that is selected for Saints Triumphant Sunday and has been for centuries. So today... We're going to look at this section in two different ways. First, Jesus' words today will be a further explanation of what we learned last week, talking about the separating the sheep and the goats, to understand better Jesus' final judgment. But secondly, we will see what a glorious time it will be for all the saints and believers in Jesus. Let's look again to Matthew 25. Jesus says, At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish one said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. No, they replied. There may not be enough for both of us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Lord, Lord, they replied. Oh, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. As in last week, Jesus uses a description of what the last day will be like using a contrast. This time, it's not the sheep and the goats, but here we have wise and foolish virgins. Jesus emphasizes virgins here because they are awaiting the arrival of their bridegroom. But notice the difference of choice of contrast that Jesus uses. Sheep and goats are different breeds. But virgins are all one and the same. Jesus is not talking about two completely different breeds or groups here as he was when we studied last week. We learned last week that the sheep are symbolic of the believers and the goats are emblematic of unbelievers. But the contrast of wise and foolish virgins is not the same. All ten virgins are to be understood as believers. Jesus is preaching to his church and not contrasting unbelievers with believers. So the question is then, why the emphasis of wise and foolish? The illustration that Jesus uses all comes down to what is behind the virgin's preparation for his return. What is behind our preparation for Jesus' return? What's behind all believers' preparation for Jesus' return? Ultimately, it comes down to motive of the heart and focus of the soul. Jesus is warning the foolish to wise up The thrust of Jesus' parable 
is the oil. Either the virgins were prepared and had extra oil to continue to keep their lamps burning, or they were not prepared and didn't have extra oil, couldn't keep on filling their lamps as they watched their lamps flicker and fan out. So what's this oil that Jesus is referring to for our lives? Some believe that the oil is the Holy Spirit. A very valid and arguable answer. Others believe that the oil is good works, the good works of believers. This also could be defended and backed by Scripture. And then there's the third option, which is faith. And rather than trying to pinpoint or choose between the three, aren't all three related? In fact, I think all three come down to faith, don't they? For it is the Holy Spirit whom creates faith in the hearts of the people, and it's from faith that good works then are established, that God prepared in advance for us to do, which comes from faith. So therefore, the common thread of all of these suggestions is faith. And so for our purposes today, moving forward, we'll look at it with this understanding, that the oil is our faith. And because the oil is the driving factor of the parable, as we apply it to ourselves, we will want to fill up and fire up our faith. Traditionally, most pictures of the lamps that the virgins are carrying look like these simple clay lamps, like this one. That is probably not really the case here, though, because those lamps were really used inside homes. And so if you took a little lamp out, outside like that, more than likely you would get extinguished very quickly because it's got a much smaller flame. So these typically were not the lamps that were used outside. So more than likely, this is not the lamps that you typically see in all the pictures of the ten virgins or that you see biblically for people using outside. Rather, a better picture is a torch. Picturing a pole or a heavy stick with an oil-drenched rag on the top would probably be much more accurate to the context. And this type of torch, the oil would need to be replenished about every 15 minutes. And the trimming of the, of the lamps, which it talks about here in the parable, would be the trimming of the scorched part of the rags. And then dipping it in oil to keep it going. With this picture in mind, it is much more visual to apply to yourself. Is your faith a flourishing flame or a fluttering flicker? Well, if you're like me, it wavers between the two all the time. A fluttering flicker or a flourishing flame. Sometimes it's flourishing, sometimes it's fluttering. Sometimes it feels like it's all fanned out completely. Right now, while we're here in worship and surrounded by encouragement from our fellow believers, fed with God's word and sacraments, filling the air with praises to God, I like to say that my torch is filled up and it's glowing for all to see. But the high of worship, the high of Sunday morning can easily turn into a low as I allow myself to be brought down by all the negativity of this world, the news, the loneliness, the doubt that can set in if I've done enough, the worries of life. My torch of faith flickers to almost non-existent and I find myself nowhere near the means to be filled up again and light my torch aglow again. 
Are we wise or foolish virgins, dear friends? If we're honest with ourselves, we're both. We waver between them all the time and maybe lean towards one more than the other and more often than we'd like to admit. Have you ever been asked if you think you have a strong faith? Sometimes it hasn't even come in the form of a question, but rather a bold statement from somebody else that says, man, you have great faith. This is what we all want. This is what we all want to strive to have. But really, is any single one of us confident in claiming that we have great faith? That our oil is always filled up? I haven't found one time that I opened up the Bible and I didn't learn something new. God's word is constantly feeding me, is constantly feeding you every time you open it up or listen to it. God's word is constantly encouraging you, is constantly there to enlighten you and strengthen you. God's word is there to prepare you for Jesus' return. We all need this constant growth. We all need this constant growth with Jesus every day because at a moment's notice, our attention can easily, so easily turn off of him and then our flame turns into a flicker. The truth is, We are the ten versions, both wise and foolish, each and every one of us. Our faith has great highs, but our faith also has very low lows. Jesus is preparing us for his return so that when he does come, we will enter with him into the wedding banquet of the Lamb. The time is now to keep our faith filled up because our faith can't tell us exactly when Jesus is coming. Jesus himself tells us in the words today that no one knows the day or the hour. And if we think that we can wait to fill up our faith, it may be just too late. Do not let it come down to you knocking on the door and saying, Lord, Lord, open up for us. And because you waited too long, the Lord will reply to you, truly I tell you, I do not know you. Don't let it come down to that. You may have faith in Jesus now, but there's no guarantee that your faith will remain. Our faith needs regular nurturing, feeding, and molding as the clay jar so that when Jesus does come again, we will welcome him with our torches ablaze, our torches of faith showing for all to see. That is why Jesus gives us the tools to keep our faith aglow. He opens up his word so that it touches us Right where we need to be touched, right at that single moment. Have you ever done that where you felt so down in the dumps and you needed comfort and you, and you chose to open up the Bible and you open it up and you find a section that reaches you right then and there? It's because God's word is living and active, sharper than dividing soul and spirit. It's very powerful. God is speaking directly to you every single time you open up his word so that you can be touched every moment. He reminds you of your baptism, that you are a dear child of God, and at that moment, he made you righteous, holy, a saint, all because of what he has done for you. He gives you of himself 
so that you can touch and taste the forgiveness of your sins as you receive his true body and blood at the altar. Partaking of these things and surrounding yourself with his word daily is carrying the extra oil wherever you go so that your faith remains burning all the way until you enter the wedding banquet with Jesus, your bridegroom. And oh, what a wonderful wedding banquet it will be. All whose faith is burning at his arrival, at his timing for them, will enter with Jesus into the wedding banquet. All the believers who have died before you will be there. Adam and Eve, Moses and Elijah, Abraham and Sarah, David, Ruth, Rahab, the disciples, Paul, your faithful loved ones. All who still will become believers will be there too. All the angels will be there. God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, and God the Son will be all there celebrating. It will be a beautiful banquet. All believers will be gathered together forever. We will be there as saints before the throne of the Lamb. We will rejoice with endless praise and glory. We will be righteous and holy without any tears coming from our eyes. Pain, sadness, guilt, anger, all of those will be non-existent and we'll remember them no more. For we will all be together in glory everlasting. Time is now, dear friends. Fill up and fire up your faith. Keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour. Now is the time to nurture your faith. Now is the time to fill up and fire up your faith. Your bridegroom is coming soon to take you to be with him, to be married for eternity. Be ready to enter the grandest wedding banquet of them all. Fill up and fire up your faith. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. The Lord be with you. Amen.